So on all, we saw now how we can increase the core clock, increase the memory clock, and uh, basically stay at a uh, 115 watt power limit. And next step would be uh, how we can achieve uh, max Q performance for something like uh, 90, 90 watts, for example. So uh, our goal is now to reduce the, uh, the GPU's power draw so we can reduce the temperature. So I will show you the temperature first uh, this time. As you can see here, uh, we managed to reduce the temp by five degrees centigrade. So, and as you can see in this one, uh, we reduced the GPU power draw. Simple as that. And you can already see at this legend here that I uh, set the core clock to a fixed value of 1600 megahertz. On average, the core clock is at 1600 megahertz now, which is uh, for the first part of times by benchmark uh, a bit lower than stock, but uh, for the second half, it's it's bigger than stock. And what's most interesting is uh, that very co colorful plot. <laughs> um, yeah, this plot is so colorful. Um, I don't know where to start. Let's go with the first part of the times by benchmark. Um, you can see that we got, uh, yeah, what is it like? We got 46, let's say 46 frames per second at this part uh, for the stock performance. And when we uh, say, okay, let's underworld, I want 90 watts uh, power drawer, I want less temperature, um, I will I will go for the 90 watts uh, undervolting, underclock, whatever. Uh, so we get uh, 1600 megahertz fixed uh, with some decent uh, memory speed overclocking and then you would end up a little higher than stock performance. And you can also see that in the second part of the graph. So um, for the most parts, even the power limiting, the underclocking is, uh, or the fixed, fixed clocking is uh, very, very powerful compared to stock. So there's a lot of uh, unused power sleeping in our GPUs. Uh, I would suggest for all who are fans of low temperatures, go for it. You can't do anything wrong. But it can be very tricky to find those values. I will show you in a second how it's done. And in the end, we will compare the uh, fixed core clock uh, settings with the baseline again. Uh, this one is uh, the first 1600 megahertz fixed uh, core clock. You can already uh, also see that in this pinkish uh, line here. So this is the stock one. So now we got straight 1600. Um, and the next ones uh, got increased memory frequency, memory clock speed. So, and this is uh, already over uh, 1800. So um, this one is the 1600 megahertz uh, GPU core clock and 13 gigahertz effective memory clock. Before we uh, come to the next chapter, um, I will show you how you can do that, how you can uh, achieve such a fixed core clock uh, overclocking. So the memory part is very simple. You simply take the slider, put it to whatever level you want. Uh, for me, everything beyond uh, 1000 plus was not stable at all. So you get artifacts uh, like errors on the screen in your 3D, uh, favorite 3D game and even in Time Spy sometimes. So something like uh, this gives, um, yeah, gives some artifacting and 1200 gives you uh, a whole computer crash basically, <laughs> sometimes. Not always, of course, but sometimes. Um, so I would suggest you don't exceed uh, 500 megahertz um, because of the cooling solution. Okay, and now a quick word on the cooling solution. Um, on the left image, you can see the original layout. Um, with the original thermal pads. And as you can see, this is the GPU side, GPU die, and there should be the uh, video memory uh, placed under those thermal pads. But unfortunately, those thermal pads are just half sized, so they are covering uh, half of the memory die. Uh, on the right side, you can see that I modified it a bit, so it covers the old memory dies. But uh, I can tell you already that this could void your remedy, so if you want to do this mod, call support first and ask if this is okay. Uh, so I asked myself, what was the reason for doing that? So my first suspicion was it's about the mounting pressure. 
you see when you got a lower mounting pressure on the GPU core and even on the CPU, then the thermal crease would uh, be thicker at this point and the thermal transfer would be worse. So you would see higher temperatures. And I was quite right about it suspicion because my contact at XMG uh, confirmed that this was the reason. Early prototypes of the XMG Apex 15 had full-sized uh, thermal pads, but uh, they measured up to 3 or 4 degrees centigrade uh, worse GPU temperatures, they said. I can't confirm that yet, I have to run some tests, but just for your information, if you think about such a mod, like on the right side, you could maybe get some worse GPU temperatures, so be careful. And now a quick word on how you can realize that power limiting. So our target would be to get a curve which uh, allows us to run our 2070 or 2060 or whatever GPU you're running at, at max Q performance levels. So we aim for 80 to 90 watt power draw, but we want to keep the performance very high. In fact, we want to achieve roughly stock performance in the end. But before I start right away uh, and wonder why is my frequency curve looking any different from yours, it's because of the configuration file. So basically you have to open the installation folder of MSI Afterburner, open this config file here and change those four lines to the settings I show you here. Going below 600 millivolts makes no sense because 600 millivolts is in fact the lowest you can get uh, with the voltage controllers for uh, those GPUs. And going above 1000 millivolts makes no sense too, because we are running a mobile GPU configuration, so we will never reach those values. Okay, after changing these settings and uh, restarting MSI Afterburner, you can open the curve editor and it will look pretty much the same as mine. To get a feeling for uh, the voltage range our stock GPU is running at, uh, you can use any benchmark, time spy for example, or game benchmarks, doesn't matter, because it's it starts up really quickly and you can change your settings uh, quickly when it crashes. <laughs> I'm using firmware in this example. So I can just start the GPU test. And as you can see in this graph now, in this, in this curve uh, editor, um, you can see a small dotted line. Uh, and it's hovering at roughly 850 millivolts to 875 millivolts. So, this is pretty much the range uh, where we will see 150 watt power limit. To achieve any power limiting uh, effect, like on a max G GPU, uh, we have to cut the curve down at one point. So we are looking for a voltage which allows us to run under the 150 watt power limit. Um, in this case, I will choose 725 millivolts because I already know that this is roughly 90 watts. So you choose the section behind this point uh, using the shift key and track all of the curve down beneath uh, the horizontal line uh, of this point. Now you apply and as you can see uh, MSI Afterburner can be a little buggy sometimes. <laughs> so this should not happen. You can revert the settings and uh, try again. If it doesn't apply for the last tiny bits here uh, don't care too much about it because you will never reach those high voltages. And in the end, if we uh, run firmark now, you will see that the dotted line stays right at that point uh, and does not exceed it anymore. So in the end, we can check our power draw and now you can see it, uh, we are running at just 82 watts. But our performance will be lower than stock now uh, because we are just running at 1400 megahertz roughly. So in the end, we also want to increase uh, the frequency at that point. So from making some experiences in the past, uh, we saw that we can uh, go for 200 megahertz plus uh, and run it stable. So I will just do that. Uh, it was 204 megahertz in fact. Hit apply. And maybe you can see that the curve snapped to a stable point, which is a bit lower than we uh, aim for. It's because at least for the RTX 20 series, uh, the stepping size for the uh, frequency for the megahertz is 50 megahertz. So uh, we can snap to 1590, for example, and the next step would be 16.5, then 16.20 and so on. And as you can see now, our settings run just fine, but uh, we got some more power draw, of course, because we increased the frequency as explained earlier more frequency, more clock speed, does also increase the power losses, even if you run at the same voltage. And also keep in mind that there will be some more power draw if you also increase the memory clock speed. 
Uh, in my experience, when we go for 500 megahertz higher uh, clock speed, as I can recommend to you, um, then we consume roughly three to four watts more on top. Uh, and the next topic is a quite important one. It's about stability because uh, we saw uh, in our topic number three, we saw that uh, clock memory uh, together overclocking. And I can tell you, this is the orange line here, by the way, uh, I can tell you it's not stable in all games. Um, so I was asking why, what's up, why it's not stable? Well, it's because uh, of this curve. When we, you see, when we, when we go for a 200 megahertz overclock, uh, something like this, you see, um, we simply shifted up this curve. But the uh, thing is that at higher clock speeds, uh, the GPU or the, the over overclocking headroom, let's say, is getting smaller and smaller. So in theory, you should not use 200 megahertz at this end. You should more or less like use more like 150 or 130, for example. And on this end, on the other hand, uh, you will never reach this region because 150 watt power limit is too high. But on this end, you can uh, yeah, simply put it up to like, I don't know, 250 or something like this. So you got 50 megahertz more on the low side and 50 megahertz less on uh, the high side. So the real setting, uh, which is uh, working really good for my GPU at least, is uh, 800 millivolts with 180 plus. As I said, we need a little fall off to compensate for the overclocking headroom. And easiest way is to press control again, take the top slider and decide um, for the fall off value we want to adjust. So. Um, well, I got good experience with uh, 50 megahertz, so we will go down to 130 on this uh, point. And on the low side, we will go up by 50 megahertz to 230. And the middle between 600 millivolts and 1000 is 800 millivolts. And this is 180. So in the end, it can be very annoying to uh, find the correct settings for your GPU. Every GPU is different. Don't expect my settings to work. Maybe mine are worse. Uh, maybe mine are better than yours. I don't know. So in the end, you should go out and just test your settings in your favorite games. And that's basically all which is represented in this graph. So you can see, uh, this is a time spy again. We can see uh, the gray ones, or stock one. And uh, I overlaid the simple 200 megahertz plus GPU speed uh, overclock and uh, this diagonal overclocking I showed you right now. So this uh, head overclocking headroom fall off method. And you can see it performs pretty much the same. It's a little, little slower because we lose uh, 20 megahertz from time to time. And you can also see at the core clock part that our uh, diagonal overclocking method is working just fine. So the core clock is uh, pretty much on the same level than the traditional 200 megahertz, simply linear overclocking. The temperature is pretty much the same. Uh, the difference in the first part is just because uh, the heatsink was a bit cooler in general. So it heated up to this pretty much the same point. So there should be no difference because power draw, it's the same. So let's take a look at our baseline again. Uh, we got 7700 for uh, our stock condition GPU. Um, and this one, this score 8200 is simply our diagonal overclocking method without any memory overclocking. Uh, applying the memory overclocking, the simple one, plus 500 megahertz, uh, effectively 12 gigahertz, uh, it's already very impressive score. We are close to the uh, RTX 2070 Super mobile performance. And using a 13 gigahertz memory overclocking, we are surpassing that performance. So this is pretty much RTX 2070 Super Mobile. And finally, let's uh, take a look at some real game overclocking results <laughs> because time spray is not a game. So you guessed it already, I guess. Uh, I take Shadow of the Tomb Raider again because this got an inbuilt benchmark, um, which is very cool for testing memory overclocking, uh, CPU overclocking, and uh, also GPU overclocking. 
So let's start with the uh, results first. Um, so I'm running uh, Ryzen 9 3912 core processor at uh, 4 gigahertz uh, fixed core uh, clock speed and also 16 gigabytes of Corsair Rengen's uh, DDR4 SODIMM memory uh, running at 3300 uh, CL18. The first result I want to look at is our uh, power limiting, uh, underclocking, overclock, no. <laughs> it's uh, basically a fixed GPU core voltage overclocking slash undervolting. Uh, I don't know how to call it, but uh, as you can see, the performance is pretty much uh, like stock. Um, we are running way cooler, so our CPU is running cooler, cooler. The, the fans are not spinning that far up. Uh, our GPU temperature is uh, roughly 5 degrees Celsius cooler. So this is a setting which um, is very helpful for all who want a quieter system, a cooler system. And finally, let's take a look at our diagonal overclocking, which is a little less than our, uh, which is a little less than our uh, straightforward overclocking, uh, as you can see here. But uh, we are very close. I would suggest go for the diagonal overclocking uh, if you want a stable, reliable system running at the stock power draw and go for the undervolt if you want. If you, if you think stock performance is fine, I just want some quieter fans, some cooler temps. Just go for it. To make things complete, let's take a look at our frame rate for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Um, you can see the frame rate is pretty much the same for the diagonal and for the classic overclocking by 200 megahertz. And uh, it's our, our fixed core clock speed is very close to stock again. And finally, let's uh, look at this and let's appreciate the benefit of that uh, fixed GPU core voltage uh, overclocking slash undervolting. You basically see an average GPU power draw of, let's say, 85 watts, something like this. Sometimes you exceed 90 watts, but yeah, basically this is very cool to, uh, yeah, to cool down your uh, notebook and uh, lower the GPU fan speed by some margin. That's it for the video. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you are still here, <laughs> I guess the video is so long. Um, yeah, a lot of lot of stuff to talk about. Um, and I will close with this image because uh, this is one of my upcoming projects. I will mod the thermal solution of this notebook. I got a spare one uh, from XMG. And uh, I plan to nickel code it so I can experiment with uh, liquid metal the proper way uh, with this heat sink. So normally copper soaks liquid metal and the nickel plating should prevent it. So stay tuned for the next videos. Uh, there are more coming uh, the next few weeks. So thanks for watching uh, as I said before and see you next one. Bye bye.